Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Louis Van Amstel podcast with me, Louis. Um, I had the pleasure to talk about my first son's adoption, Daniel, and now I am going to talk about Jonathan's adoption. He likes to go by Johnny, Johnny Van Amstel, and his middle name is Travis. Um, so when Josh and I my now ex-husband um, decided to adopt. Um, we knew nothing about it. We invested a lot of time. I must say he did a lot of work in that department. And we realized while we were adopting uh, Johnny, sorry, Daniel, and we were looking into Johnny, um, we realized that every single state works completely different. And Daniel was adopted in the state of Colorado, and they were completely different from the state of Nevada, where we adopted uh, Johnny. So we also had the disadvantage after we adopted Daniel that COVID struck, and then the pandemic. And the pandemic struck, what, March, end of March 2020? And we had just been matched with Johnny. Um, and now we were crossing our fingers. How long was it going to be before we could actually meet Johnny and adopt him? Or at least become custodians for six months. Anyway, before I go into his journey, I want to go back to um, the process. Uh, so I shared this all with Daniel, but in a nutshell, you have to do workshops, uh, you have to do training, you have to um, answer hundreds of questions, and they're not multiple choice questions. These are open questions, and they do both parties, both Josh and I had to fill it out separately. Then they come to your house, and those caseworkers are going to ask you a lot of questions yet again, alone, separately, uh, but also together, then they're going to look at the house. Is the house safe enough, etc. Well, luckily, after we adopted Daniel, we didn't have to do that rigorous process again because we had already done it. We just had to update it. In other words, pay more money. Anyway, we gladly did. Uh, so then there was another rule which we didn't know. Originally, we wanted to adopt two or three children at the same time. Now, we wanted two boys and a girl uh, between the age of, I guess, three and eight. Um, now, that's looking for a needle in a haystack, with, which, of course, um, didn't work out because that's pretty much impossible. Now, when you go to a website and you want to adopt like us, through the foster care system in the United States. You just go to a website and we happen to go to the one in Colorado for Daniel and the one in Nevada, Heart Gallery of Vegas. And when you Google it, what websites come up, you click on the website and there you can literally click in how many kids you want, what age, what, eth what eth ethnicity, all these questions you can pretty much put in a search engine and all the kids that are available uh, will pop up with thumbnails and a little paragraph explaining what their favorite color is, favorite food, favorite sport, everything positive. Because of course, they want people like us to melt and want to adopt. So they're not giving you anything negative. Well, for us, in our case, it took the thumbnail to have us melt with both of our boys. So. When we decided, okay, two or three at the same time is going to be very difficult to find the age category that we wanted. We didn't care color of skin. We didn't care. It was just more the age category. So then we decided let's do one because we had seen Daniel's thumbnail and fell in love. Um, so that's when we realized from the caseworkers, well, you can't really look for your second a child yet until you are done adopting Daniel. So in other words, when you adopt a sibling group, bio siblings, you can adopt them at the same time. But if you go for single children from different states, you cannot do that. And actually, in hindsight, I'm glad they have that rule 
because everything is a process. And it also gave Daniel, who was with us a year before Johnny, time to really get to know Daniel and to really instill some, you know, we need to do a lot of parenting. We had to catch up because for 10 years, there was no parenting. They have not been parented. So here we go. We have to do it all and catch up. So anyway, after uh, Daniel was adopted in December of 2019, we already started the process, not officially because they told us we couldn't, but that didn't stop us from going on websites. So the moment it was Daniel's adoption day in December of 2019, just before uh, Christmas, uh, we had already seen um, Johnny's picture. We had gone through many websites. Again, the credit goes to Josh. He invested a lot of time to go there. And if he saw kids that we both liked, he shared them with me. And uh, then uh, we uh, had to wait until the adoption. So the adoption was final after Christmas. Boom, we submitted um, our study guide, the book that we had to go through to become foster parents. And then uh, we submitted. I don't know exactly. It was such, there are sort of, such a lot of details, but I believe by mid-March, we were matched with Johnny. What does that mean, being matched? So everyone in the United States can go to these websites and submit their booklet um, with all their, you know, foster care information and information about themselves. Um, so you can imagine if kids are handsome and kids are in very good spirits and that paragraph explains really well characteristics of the boy or girl, that many people want to adopt that same child. So when it came to Johnny, again, there were multiple people that want to adopt him. So you're almost competing for a child. Well. Once you get an email or a phone call where they explain you have been matched, that means they chose you as parents to continue the journey to adopt uh, the child. So that, of course, we were ecstatic about because that's what you want to hear, that you are matched with a boy, in this case, boy for us. So now we had to wait because COVID hit, pandemic, and Nevada was closed, Utah was closed, we couldn't cross into Nevada, we couldn't meet Johnny, so we had to sit it out. In the meantime, we have to do a lot of um, communication with the caseworkers, and this is where, um, oh, I'm going again, because I remember that once you're matched, now they're going to give you all the information about the child all what has happened, the trauma. And both Josh and I with both kids, when we read that letter, you go through so many emotions of sadness that these kids had to go through that trauma or deal with that trauma between the age of, they can remember what, three, four years old and 10 years old. For so many years, they had to deal with trauma they didn't ask for. So sadness goes through your head, disappointment, anger of how these people are still. Yes, I've gone there in jail. Why are these people that can't take care of their kids or just literally give them up or treat them, neglect them, abuse them physically, mentally, emotionally? These people should be in jail and they should not be able to procreate. It's sad. So when you read those that letter for us twice. I was bawling, so was Josh. But not just bawling because of all these emotions, but also bawling, crying, because it only strengthened the why we were going to adopt again. And that letter is supposed to scare you off, is to go to show you, hey, that thumbnail picture is great, the paragraph is great, but here's the reality. Are you still willing to step forward? Well, that was an easy yes. 
Because we want kids. We don't need kids. We want kids. We wanted kids. And it's the best thing that ever happened. It's the hardest and yet most fulfilling job you'll ever have. So we said, yes, we're moving on. We're going forward. And then it was actually Josh's birthday, May 3rd. And we were not able to see Johnny because of the pandemic, but we had permission that we could meet via FaceTime, via Zoom. So that's what we did. So we met May 3rd, 2020. Um, first, we wanted to make sure that we were not gonna overwhelm Johnny. So it was just Josh and I, no Daniel, no dogs, just the three of us. And um, it was great. It was just, you know, of course, we had a boatload of questions and I'm sure he felt overwhelmed um, and we got one word answers, but we knew, I mean, uh, now that they're teenagers five years later, that has not changed. How was school today? Good. How was tennis today? Good. How was your overnight? Good. One word, but I'm sure many of you are parents, so you know you get one word answers, even if things were fantastic. Good. Anyway, so that was the first time, and then we introduced uh, Daniel to Johnny via FaceTime, and he met our dogs via FaceTime. So I guess he was really excited, too, that finally, um, a little different, unique, because he could see that we were clearly two dads, not a mom and a dad, a dad and a dad. And uh, But something tells me when I met Johnny via FaceTime <laughs> that there was a reason why the caseworker, Minnie, who we love and adore, what a great caseworker she was. She's retired now. And um, um, I think we got matched with him because Johnny felt right at home. Um, I don't need to go into any further detail because I don't believe in labeling and... Um, I want him to love whoever he wants to love, which many conversations have already been had in that subject matter. And both of my kids, they know they can come home with whomever they want, but they don't have to label themselves. I'm going to do a whole podcast about that, how I believe and what I believe. But uh, right now, back to Johnny. So we did a few um, um, now by this time, uh, twice, twice a week, we FaceTimed with uh, Johnny. And finally, June 3rd, we got permission that the states were open. So we got into our uh, car and drove from uh, our home in Utah to Vegas, Las Vegas, Henderson to be exact. And Monday night, June 3rd, 2020, we met Johnny in person. And the first thing he wanted to do was go to McDonald's and have some burgers. So that's what we did. And then we, oh no, I believe we also went to Chipotle that night. So we knew we had a hungry child on our hands, not because they weren't fed. It's just, he's going to be tall and he loves to eat. Anyway, fun fact there. He's towering over me already now. It's 5'10". Um, so June 3rd, we met on a Monday. On Tuesday, they allowed us to have an overnight, meaning he would not stay in the house uh, in the foster home with the foster parents, but he was allowed to actually stay with us in the hotel for an overnight to, you know, to get used to it. And then uh, that Tuesday was lovely. So what I really love about CASA, what is CASA is an organization of volunteers who spend time with kids in foster care. And these people don't have to do it, uh, but they do. So Johnny's casa was Sandra and she joined us because she knew that he was going to go away to Utah because he was going to be adopted. So she wanted to see him one more time. It's so dang hard. I assume for everyone in these kids' lives, when they're in foster care, that people are there to help them, to support them, to be there for them. And then they have to say goodbye. 
Oh, that must be hard. Anyway, Sandra spent the time at the hotel and the pool and it was great. And of course, we try not to show these emotions. We don't want to pressure the children um, because they probably don't understand why are we so emotional. Anyway, Wednesday morning, June 6th, we get permission to actually take Johnny home. We don't need to come back. So I explained in the uh, adoption process with Daniel that we had to go back to Grand Junction, Colorado for three months back and forth to start process with him. But as he stays there for three months and we had to go into therapy with him, um, now he had a failed adoption before he got adopted by us. So they wanted to be careful. That was a great process. Was it cumbersome and a lot of time spent in the car? Um, but it was worth it. So we did it. But it was kind of a surprise that the state of Nevada thinks differently. These kids have been in foster care for so long already. If we can give them a home, we want to give them that home as soon as possible. Can you fault them for thinking that? No. And we were as thrilled. Would we have gone back and forth? Yes, we would have. Um, sorry, I just have to... I'm trying to dry it up by not touching it, but it's not working well for me. Anyway, um, so... Um, June 6th, so you have to understand, Monday, um, June 3rd, so it was June 5th. Gosh, don't even hold me against these details. I know it was Monday night we met him, and Wednesday afternoon we left back for Utah. But before we left, we actually got to meet Jonathan's biological sister, who was in foster care with him. And when they were in foster care with his family, they wanted to adopt the girl, but not the boy. So that means they were separated. So Johnny was separated from his uh, sister, Kelsey, who was then adopted uh, out of the foster care system by this couple. So we met them and they get to spend some time with each other. Uh, but here was a little bit of a silver lining. Uh, the court made both parents sign a document that we have to make sure that these two see each other twice a year, once in Vegas and once in Utah. And we were, I mean, we signed, boom, no problem, um, even if it was going to be four times a year. But they were going to stay in touch anyway via FaceTime, beauty, beautiful, uh, sorry, did I just burp in front of all of you? Excuse me. Anyway, um, we signed that contract and also technology, smartphones, thank you. In this case, very positive. Social media, not so. But the fact that these kids can FaceTime and still feel they have that connection, so that was great. So we saw uh, Kelsey that morning and then we went home. And when we came home, um, we were in on it, but Johnny wasn't. Our whole entire home full of balloons and our garage doors <sighs> the neighborhood came together with my mother with my family to uh, decorate welcome home Johnny gosh it's four and a half years ago and still it gets me all positive so, pooh, and then Johnny meeting Daniel for the first time. It was a little strange because they'd never met, and here they are like, like that, Instant Brothers. If you haven't seen the movie Instant Brothers with Mark Wahlberg, um, you have to see it you can kind of that was the process when that movie came out it was before we started adopting it was just what it's like they took our our life story and turned it into that movie anyway go see it it's a comedy but there's so many heartfelt moments and moments 
they took from the actual foster care process. We laughed and cried. Now, just on a fun note, um, we saw the movie before we adopted. We saw the movie again when we had adopted Daniel. Then we saw it again when we had adopted Johnny. Pooh! That movie took on a different meaning every single time watching it. Gosh. Anyway, so now the six months of custody starts. So again, if you didn't see the other podcast um, about Daniel's adoption, uh, once you take custody, which was for us that Wednesday, the six month clock starts ticking. These six months, now the child, in this case, Johnny, can decide this is not for me. They're not the right parents for me. I want to go back. Or the parents can say, this child is behaving, behaving so much differently and we can't handle it and we cannot adopt. So it is a, at first we thought, come on, can we adopt now? Um, but then in hindsight, again, so many things in hindsight, what a great process because there's no pressure that you have six months to really get to know the child or the, in this case, the children. How is their relationship? We have three dogs. Uh, how does that work? Oh, everything. There are a lot of variables. Well, um, of course, every house and every um, sibling group, they fight like cats and dogs, but that's family, real family. So of course, it was great. It was horrible, it was great again, then it was not so good, and then it was fantastic, and then went back to horrible. And look, it's a roller coaster, but I've heard from many friends along the way. They say, Louis, whether your kids are adopted or not, or biological, we've gone through the same shit as you're going through right now. So um, I guess it's family. Whether if it's chosen or blood, it's the same thing. It feels the same to me. Um, so we, again, we knew that the beginning of December would be the six month period. So we asked permission, can we start the process with our lawyers earlier so that we can make sure that we have a date to go to court right after that half a year period. We knew no matter what, we are going to adopt Johnny. So, um... And of course, we had a great lawyer that was on top. And of course, this is different. Using a lawyer for divorce or litigation is one thing. But being a lawyer or needing a lawyer that works with adoption and getting the adoption through, oh my gosh, I would sign up for that job because uh, that's only positive. So um, then again, even though the borders between the states were open again, uh, it looked like we we went back to normal and then, nope, everything closed again. again. And then in the state of Nevada, the courts did not go back in person. It was all through WebEx. Um, I mean, Zoom. It's one of those uh, streaming platforms. So we had the experience with Daniel that they had to open the doors not everyone could sit. That's how many people showed up for Daniel's adoption. So when we heard that it was going to be virtual, Josh and I, we didn't share that with the kids, but we were so disappointed because now it's just, you know, it was the four of us. My mother happened to be with us. So five of us and the judge via the TV as we were able to connect it to the TV. But then there was a silver lining because when we adopted Daniel, all my friends and family from Europe could not come all the way to go in person to be part of the adoption of Daniel. Now, could they? Of course they could, but it's 10 hours flight. It's $1,500 just to fly. Um, and then we have so many friends and family in other states. Some, of course, uh, my father-in-law uh, came some of my friends came, but many have nine to five jobs. They can't just leave. So this was the silver lining. All my friends from Holland, my family from Holland, all our family members and friends from other states, we could just share the link 
and we have a lot of waiting rooms. We had a lot of pages of people that could join. So that was lovely um, that they could actually join the adoption process of Johnny. So here was the day that um, the adoption happened, early December uh, for Johnny. And we're sitting on the couch next to each other and we all had to put our hands up that we would uh, tell the truth and that we would, um, uh, of course, hopefully say yes to the judge so we make the adoption um, final. Now, what was also funny, um, well, you can see only part of the TV because this was the actual TV that we had in the old home and it was big enough that we could see all the thumbnails of many of our friends and my best friend Mary Margaret was actually Mary Margaret Humes um, who is my best friend she was on the top right corner but they didn't know we knew because we could see it so it was funny that everyone was crying <laughs> and laughing and because the judge was great she was lovely um, so here we are sitting and it was completely different than Daniel's adoption but sitting there um, also, I have to give you a little bit of perspective. Josh and I were sitting in the courtroom with Daniel in between us, and at one point when the process started and the questions were asked, I'm getting choked up again. It was so amazing, but we were bawling, um, going through all these questions by the judge, um, and Daniel was just looking at us and kind of laughing it off. Um, and he was just laughing, oh, you're crying, you're crying. So he was just happy, um, but not crying. He was just happy. Um, and then this one was different because I had Johnny on my side and the judge was asking him questions. And by the time I think he was realizing that this was his moment. His moment, he was going to leave foster care and be with his forever family. So I'm looking at the TV and I'm okay. I'm not crying. But the moment I turn around, and see Johnny's face, tears. What a moment that was. So the judge finalized it and Daniel and Johnny were both adopted. And oh my gosh, did we have a long moment, hugs and gosh, excitement. But also, which was funny, all the people on the thumbnails, <laughs> they were bawling, but they had no idea that they were on camera too. Anyway, um, what, a, what a great journey. Both completely different, but the end result is very positive. And I cannot advocate enough that adopting from the foster care system in the United States is so much cheaper and affordable than going to another country and trying to adopt a baby. I know it's a stigma that when you, when you can't have your own children and you adopt a baby, it's more real than if you adopt a child out of foster care that is older, meaning five years or older. I can tell you, I don't have biological children, but I can tell you the moment we saw the thumbnails of these kids, I have the same feeling still now as I had then. That is my child, and you don't touch my child. Because if you will, his parent will come after you. Now I know this is really dramatic and over the top, but we've had some situations with Daniel um, that Papa Bear came out. Oh, and that school teacher was not happy with us. But I'm going to do a whole episode podcast 
on that because I want to share it with you from my own mouth, even though it went viral. Um, but coming back to uh, Johnny and the adoption, so you get support from the country, from the state and federal until the kids are 18. You get support. Medicaid insurance is taken care of until they're 18. You get support from the state where you adopt the child. Um, excuse me. Um, we actually didn't know that until we were asked the question, where do we send that money to? So we, we use it. We use it for the children. Oh my gosh, they've done some fun trips, some fun things, and still. Um, and I just want to advocate for kids from the foster care system in the United States. And whether you adopt a baby or a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old, it's a decision. And you'll be surprised how you feel when you make the decision to adopt. Um, feels real, as real to me, and they're not my blood, but it feels that way, and I don't regret any moment that I did, that we did, and we are going through a lot, because the trauma is coming out, it needs to be dealt with, and we have given ourselves the five-year window until 18, we want to help these kids, they're our kids, our responsibility that we chose to take on. Um, I'm already 30 minutes in and I have so much more to say because there are so many other stories because both Daniel and Johnny have siblings. Some of them they haven't even met and some they have been separated from. But there are silver linings and I want to share them with you in the future. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and um, I hope this inspires you to want to help promote adoption. Thank you.